You guys cool if I play some sports? This may look and sound like Tom Cruise, but this is not the Hollywood actor. I am not Morgan Freeman. What you see is not real. And this may look like Morgan Freeman, but this too is another deep fake. This software is becoming more sophisticated, more ubiquitous, and is increasingly in the hands of fraudsters. A mother from Arizona was the victim of a horrifying scam using an AI-generated deepfake of her daughter's voice. No project has ever given such opportunities to residents of the country. Martin Lewis is one of the most trusted voices in personal finance. But if this looks like his endorsement for an investment scheme, this too is a deep fake promoting a scam. These are absolutely everywhere. There is a tsunami of scam adverts that has been for years. And now they're deep fake videos. Well, it is already difficult enough for many vulnerable and some non-vulnerable people out there to tell the difference. Fair Eva is a groundbreaking research project that has studied a deep fake even more deceptive than video. The only thing is that video, you need to match both the voice together with the face. And so that actually becomes a much more challenging thing, or it becomes easier to pick up, for example, if the lips are out of sync with the words that are being spoken. But with voice, you're effectively sitting with only this one modality, which is sound. You're not seeing anything. Are you saying that voice cloning is a bigger threat, especially in the hands of scammers, than deep fake videos? Yeah, I definitely think so. The voice has really become, in, in many ways, a medium to be mistrusted, which I think is a great pity. Policymakers are growing concerned by the increase in cloning. Last month, this US Senate subcommittee heard how this software is being used to extort in fake ransom calls, like the one this mother got she thought was from her daughter. But nothing could have prepared me for her response that she gave me next. Mom, these bad men have me. Help me, help me, help me. She begged and pleaded as the phone was taken from her. The voice that this mother recognized was a digital clone. And this is the kind of tool that could be used to make it. So we're looking at just one of the proliferation of websites and apps that make cloning easy. All you need is a voice recording of who you want to clone of a few minutes, even less. And then you upload it to a site like this and in seconds, you can clone their voice and say whatever you want to say. We've done that with a colleague of ours that you may have heard of. Channel 4's Jackie Long. And we are going to call one of our colleagues. Hello? Hi Matt. How are you? It's Jackie. I've got a spot of hay fever, so apologies for the croaky voice. This is just a quick call. Really, I left my wallet on the way to work. You couldn't possibly lend me 50 quid for lunch, could you? I'll pay you back tomorrow. Promise. <laughs> this clone was made on a basic software that, like others, is widely available. In the market, there are also far more sophisticated techniques being used that companies like this are attempting to counter. Deepfakes and generative AI fraud, for example, my fake face, are not only difficult to detect, they're actually impossible for average humans, let alone experts like us, to detect. Um, much like a computer virus on our computers, we require real-time software to detect deepfake or generative AI faces. Today, we are in the age of tomorrow. These robots are holding a press conference at the UN. Technology was supposed to bring efficiency and clarity. Instead, we head into a golden age for misinformation and fraud. Simeon Brown there, and Matt didn't give me the £50, but that may say more about his unwillingness to share any cash. Um, but I'm joined now by Jake Moore, who investigated cybercrime for the police and now works for ESET, a cybersecurity company. Jake Moore, um, you did something similar to the thing that Simeon did to us, to your mum. Tell me why you did it and how you did it. So I like to use the latest technology to help businesses understand those risks. So I thought I'd, I'd start closer to home and I uploaded 10 minutes of my voice from a recorded presentation. I had to wait just 24 hours for the technology to get to work, the AI behind it, and then it could replicate my voice. And so the next day I just uh, created a pretend podcast and pressed play uh, and it sounded exactly like me, but I thought the mum test is probably best. So I asked my mum to listen to it uh, when she came round and she just commented on the podcast. In fact, she said it was a bit boring, but um, she said nothing about the voice. Uh, and I asked her if there's anything strange about it. And she said, obviously nothing about it. So when I told her it was actually an AI clone 
of my voice, she was utterly shocked. And I think that's what's so scary. Uh, she thought at best it might have been someone who was maybe impersonating me, but she, she didn't even think it, it was actually technology behind it. I mean, it, it, it's the, the level of success with this AI voice cloning that is really alarming, isn't it? Because it very much depends how it's used. Now, we saw in Simeon's piece, consumer expert Martin Lewis, his image and voice used in an AI-generated scam. Is the technology outpacing our ability to control it? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the video we saw of Martin Lewis, I must say, it was an extremely well-made deep fake. Uh, and being used in this way, that's what we all fear. We don't want to be seeing it used in illicit purposes. And so what we've seen in the past, the technology needs a lot of footage of someone. That's why trusted figures and, and famous people are used. But I think what we're looking at in the future is less time needed. So for me, it was just 10 minutes. I'm reading reports of under three minutes being used uh, in the future for at least voice cloning but when deep fake catches up as well i think the police are going to have a very difficult time and i think effectively only work on the prevention side of things rather than trying to cure it I mean, but how do you prevent this yeah well the police are putting a lot of money into say the new fraud squad that they, they've got and and with cyber criminals getting more sophisticated all the time it's increasing with the technology we've seen ai chat gpt and so on being used in in very creative ways i think what we've got to do is make people understand that seeing might not always be believing in the future. I think we're, we're very used to questioning, say, text messages now or, or phishing emails, for example. But now going into the future, looking at audio and video uh, potential fakes, we should be standing back and questioning it, just like you wouldn't part with your cash from someone you've never met in the street. If it's an audio or visual visual message, that's, that's we be exactly them. the thing, isn't it? A lot of us have been scammed by DM or people have attempted to get in touch with us, and you think, oh, I know this person, they've messaged me before. But the addition of voice and face makes it really, really hard to protect yourself. Yeah, that's right. And it just is so difficult for the police to get out there and give them those tools that they might need. And so at the moment, the police are saying just err on the side of caution like they were originally until they can speed up that way of potentially trying to stop this technology. But it's very difficult to spot uh, what's coming in the future with these deep fakes because so many videos are already edited that it will just make it difficult.